All right, this week uh, I got a little bit of work done. I've gone over this before, uh, but thought I'd show it just so I can have a video here. And so many videos that if people come in watching the middle of the series, they don't have to go back to see. Uh, anyway, so this is the what they call the third ring of the Michael Badley. 3D printed R2-D2 plans, the cut version that's cut into pieces that fit on a printer of about 300 by 300 millimeter. Um, this ring has these two small pieces, one on each side here, and this is the back panel. I forgot to uh, work on these. When I was working on the big ones, I left these in the box and then realized, oh yeah, that's they actually are part of the ring. Um, so, what I did was, just like uh, the last two rings of the body, I put uh, Bondo glazing putty all over it after I had gone over it with uh, an X-Acto knife with a chisel tip and take, took down as much as I could of the obviously really high spots and then I put the glazing putty a thin coat over everything um, this is the piece that's going to be the most pain in the neck because when you print it it has supports that allow this upper part to print and you take the supports out and at least in my case the upper and some of the lower areas left a little to be desired as far as the finish. So crammed some filler putty in there to try and get that so I can sand it actually flat. Try to keep the putty out of the panel lines as much as possible because afterwards if they're blocked up I'm going to have to get in there with a thin piece of sandpaper or a file or something and clean them out. So that's the first stage is me starting with this and then I'm taking the X-Acto knife and any layer lines that are sticking up high I try to scrape off first which I went over in a previous video. Um, I was using sandpaper to sand them, but if you're using it with your fingers, you're getting a really wide area that you're sanding, and you might sand areas you didn't want to. So I've taken a hobby knife with a flat chisel tip, and I'm scraping away at the high areas, and it seems to be working pretty good. That's what I did to these pieces. So it starts like this, then I try to get rid of the obvious high spots. Then I do the putty. Uh, the next step, this is a piece of the ring two. It goes underneath this one. Uh, in fact, this piece goes, see it's got the half circle, so it goes underneath that circle of the hub there. Um, so then I sand, sand it down, try and get it as level as I can. For step two and then step three I do primer and sand the primer smooth and then you can see these areas there you can obviously from the sh see from the shading that there's an area that's higher than its surroundings but there's a piece that goes in there and is screwed in there so you don't see that so let me kind of spin it around here to different area where you can see hopefully that that's pretty smooth finish and this is the first coat of primer and when I say first coat of primer I was out there and I made sure I got it on pretty thick so I did that and then I sanded it down to see what I had and it's pretty darn good pretty smooth so then this piece will need another um, spray of primer which I will try to get to a finished smooth state and then color would go on after that 
And clear, I'm not sure. A lot of people say no matter what clear you use, they eventually yellow. Um, you can do automotive clears that probably won't yellow. But I don't know that I want to mess with automotive clears. They're a, a two-part process. You can get it in a spray can. And basically, you kind of have to use the spray can within a certain number of hours before it dries up because it's it's like epoxy, two-part epoxy. You're mixing two different chemicals together and then it sprays out and then eventually it, it hardens. So either a satin white um, and, then, and then a clear or no clear. I'm not quite sure on that. But the first stage, that's a long way away, I guess, because the first stage is getting the parts smooth. Although I guess maybe that's not too far away because this is really close and once the weather gets nice, um, like I said, more primer and then it'll just be sitting here ready for paint so I might just go ahead and paint that while this second ring um, still needs to be glued together. Um, and the first coat of primer and this one needs sanding and at least this piece of this ring is going to need some more work up here on these pieces that are a little bit rough and then trying to make the make sure all these shapes are nice and sharp and not rounded and the arms fit into them um, I had I had a question somebody posted on one of my last videos about the control of the utility arms and I went over it in a previous video but since I'm here and I've got this piece in my hand I'll just quickly go over it again um, I don't have the arm with me but the arm goes in here obviously and then you can see that hole a part of the utility arm pokes through that hole and pokes out here. And then you can see there's this cutout and supports. That's for a servo. That's for a standard size servo. On top of the servo you print another geared piece that screws to the top of the servo. And then that meshes with the piece of the utility arm that's geared that pokes through that hole the servo mounts to these built-in mounts um, a pin goes through there through the arm with bearings on either side so it has something to rotate on same thing with the other arm a pin goes through there and then when you operate the servo the gear on the servo meshes with the gear on the utility arm and makes it move in and out. So it's all been incorporated into the design, which is another reason why the Mark III design is the Mark III design. It's uh, improvements off of the version 2 designs. So, yeah, um, it, you know, maybe an hour I spent on this trying to get, spread the putty where I wanted it, get it out of the areas that I didn't want it, that I left it outside for a while to cure a bit until it started getting dark then I brought it into the garage because this stuff has a fair amount of odor to it while it's drying so now that it's had a couple days of drying it's now actually my the days I work so I won't be able to probably sand this until maybe next week but at least I've again I've made some progress this week and that's, that's about it.